that are really useful defining love. And you know, love is letting someone be exactly the way they are and exactly the way they're not. And I feel my job as a leader is to create a safe environment where people can express themselves, can be themselves, that they don't have to pretend. And you could have straight and open, honest uh, communication in the office. And I think that's one of the keys to our success. You know, I've had people, I've had people who've been with me for 27 years, 20 years, 25 years. I think the average tenure of people at my firm is 12 years, which is extraordinary considering the average in my industry is probably two or three. So that was a big deal for me, right? To um, have people feel like they can be themselves. The other definition of love that I think is really useful as a leader. So, you know, there are many definitions of love, right? You got romantic love, you got love for your child, you got love for your dog. But I actually went on Webster's Dictionary. And there's another definition of love that says the unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the good of another. Then they define benevolent, kind and generous, organized to do good things for other people. Okay, that's been the foundation for me, how I treat my staff, but also how I treat my clients. You know, fees or fees are, very big in my field. You can make a lot of money placing the person, but sometimes it's just not the right fit. And can you have your attention on the concern for your client and the candidate, rather your attention on yourself to actually just make money? So as a leader and all the leaders in my firm really promote that value, are you doing the right thing for your clients and for your candidates? So you got that piece and being it feel like people can be themselves. It's pretty enjoyable going to work. With so when you find yourself in a position where it isn't the right fit, when placing someone isn't the right fit, but there could be a high dollar return if you just went ahead and shoehorned them in, how do you bring yourself to make the decision to walk away from a potentially big deal, knowing that you're walking away from money on the table if you just made it work. You're honoring the authenticity of the person. How do you make that choice? Well, you actually listen to what's best for the client and the candidate, they'll tell you. For instance, if a candidate says, you know what, I just, this culture just doesn't seem right for me, or I just did not connect with the person I'll be reporting to or the job is just not gonna give me the growth that I'm looking for, it's fine, okay, we're not gonna do it. Then I'll ask the candidate, so tell me again what's important to you. And then eventually I could find something that's right for the client, for the candidate. Or the client will say, you know what, I just, I, I just don't think he's gonna fit in culturally with my group. Now that's a hard one to ascertain, but on some points on that, I'll actually do, deep references to see what it is like, what that person is like working in teams. But sometimes you just honor the client. Um, so it's very easy. It's not It's not a struggle, it's not complex. If you do what's in the best position of a client, listen, a client and a candidate, we all know when someone's trying to manipulate us or try to sell us something, right? You could just smell it. And uh, they really appreciate when you're not doing that. So I've had clients for 35 years since 1984, when I, 37 years, I have the same clients because they know I'm looking out for them. So it goes a long way. And if you treat the candidate right, they're going to refer their friends to you. Uh, so it's not really a strong conflict. It's not. So that care and that compassion pays off more in the long run than that short term shoehorning somebody in for the sale. Yeah, and that's part of our screening process when we look to hire people internally. If we smell that someone is just committed to making money at any cost, we won't hire them. We will not hire them. They will not make it here past a couple of weeks. As soon as we smell that, or they're not coachable to let go, to do the right thing for the client and the candidate, they won't make it at Stephen Douglas. My team would actually make me fire them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have to do anything.